Welcome to Scaling the Summit. Now, this podcast, which is developed by UN Global Pulse and the United Nations Innovation Network, explores essential elements in the scaling of innovations in the development and humanitarian contexts. It draws on relevant innovation research and shares experiences from a wide range of practitioners. Ultimately, we're hoping to give insight into what it takes to move from an idea to a fully scaled project within the United Nations system. Well, to help us frame some of this conversation around scaling, very pleased to have with us Kirsten Yauer, who's the Deputy Director for Strategic Planning in the Secretary General's office. Uh, Kirsten, perhaps could you start by uh, giving us a bit of a context here? Why is innovation so important for the UN in the challenge of meeting the SDGs? Great. Thank you. Thank you, John, for this opportunity. Also to remind ourselves why are we all here uh, at the UN? What are we working towards together with our 193 member states? Fundamentally, that's working towards a better future. We had given ourselves in 2015 a set of goals to reach by 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, this year, we just arrived at the halftime. And at halftime, we realized collectively the world is behind. We need to scale things up in the second half of our quest for the SDGs. And there are two important points here. The first one is there is some not so good news. The first, for example, only 15% of all countries that the UN is working with are on track to achieve the SDGs. Most are not. And let me give you a few other examples on that. About 900 million people are still highly food insecure. Over a billion tons of food, on the other hand, is wasted every year. Over 2 billion people still do not have access to healthcare, especially in rural areas. And always uh, very, very important as we look towards the future, some 240 million kids do not have access to education. Most of them girls. So there's a lot of stuff that we need to urgently catch up on. On the other hand, there are also things that make us optimistic. And let me just highlight two examples. There are ways of accelerating the SDGs, for example, through better investments in data. Data is an incredibly, incredibly important accelerant. It helps you understand where you are, where you want to go, and chart pathways forward. And we do know from research that we've done together with the World Bank and other partners that every dollar invested in data can generate some $32. In other words, exponential returns for societies, economies, and institutions. So that's a pathway for moving faster. And we want to make uh, more such pathways available uh, for our work with member states and in many ways, we felt the excitement at the SDG Summit in September around those new opportunities in technology and innovation that have been opening up over the last few years. But it is also clear, as you have suggested, we do need to do things differently as we enter the second half of the SDG journey. We need to rethink, re-energize, and recommit to new ways of working. That's really helpful. And I hear a lot these days about UN 2.0. I wonder, could you um, elaborate a little more on UN 2.0 and this idea of doing things differently? Yes, absolutely. UN 2.0 stands for our commitment to do things differently in the UN, to change how we contribute as a family of organization to the SDG journey of our member states. The Secretary General published a strategy that he called UN 2.0 that is about two important things. It's about how we bring new expertise into UN organizations, in data, I already mentioned that, in, di in digital uh, skills, in innovation skills, in science skills, and in strategic foresight, so that we can help countries navigate the uncertainties, but also the opportunities of our time in better ways, in many ways, in 21st century ways. So that is a key element of UN 2.0. The second key element is how do we build a culture in, in our organization?
organization, where skills like that can thrive, where we build collaborative, cross-functional, and agile teams that learn how to unlock some of those new opportunities because in many ways they require a new mindset and we want to foster that. Uh, that is what UN 2.0 is about. Let me emphasize one very, very important point in this context. UN 2.0 is not something that we do for our own sake, for just the sake of UN organizations. Ultimately, this is about us being better partners to countries that are looking to build a better, greener, safer future in the 21st century. And we want to be at their side with relevant skills that can help us all move forward faster. That's lovely and very exciting. It's very much around this theme of innovating ourselves as a system. Um, can I then move on to one last question? Um, the UN's role in doing this, in supporting innovation, and particularly what we're interested in in this, in this podcast, which is the idea of scaling innovations so they have impact. Could you comment a little around that? Yes. Uh, let me first draw a larger arc and then drill down a little bit into examples and where we're already making progress and uh, where we want to go next. So innovation is incredibly important. The bigger picture is we all know we need to do things differently. So we need to generate new ideas, bring them into application, not just at pilots, but at scale. And of course, we all know that innovation is not new to the public sector. In many ways, we appreciate more today than ever that public sector-led innovation is integral to driving social advancement. Now, what is the role of the UN family in that context? Many contributions, but at the very least, one. The UN family is not just a lot of colleagues, but it's also a network that connects some 4,000 locations across this globe and creates unique opportunities to extend the global reach of knowledge, of new ideas, of new values. And what we want to do is to leverage that global network to help spread, transfer uh, knowledge and know-how and make new connections. And for me, that's really the scaling opportunity. How do we leverage our global presence so that ideas can flow from where they exist to where they are needed faster, better, and at a larger scale? Now, um, I also said uh, we're making some progress on that. The UN family in many ways is, is on the move. And let me illustrate our progress on the innovation front alone. Since we've been uh, under the leadership of uh, our Secretary General pushing the innovation agenda forward, we've been able to work with over 115 countries worldwide on helping them build and think through innovation ecosystems. How do you make innovation thrive locally has been at the forefront of our agenda. We've also thought through internally, how do we build innovation capacity in the UN family? So uh, some 90% of our UN family organizations now have innovation team in their headquarters that can help teams across that large network of 4,000 locations make a difference on the ground. So we've built that capacity and we've done that systematically. Um, all UN family uh, entities that are part of our UN Sustainable Development Group have an innovation strategy that sets out their journey in systematic detail. Now, what is this about? All of this is about learning to generate, to test, to scale up new ideas, processes, products, or services that create some sort of value. It doesn't have to be technological. It can be simple behavioral changes. And our role in that innovation value chain is to be good connectors, to be good conveners, and to connect a maximum number of stakeholders to new ideas. And let me make this a little bit more tangible here also for our listeners. And I encourage everyone to visit our website, uh, www.un20.network, where you can find hundreds of examples of how we're applying the UN 2.0 idea in practice. But let me highlight one that speaks to the point that you're raising around scaling. In our 
our uh, UN uh, Children's Fund in UNICEF, we have an incredible example of how do you take innovation to scale. It's called GIGA. GIGA is an initiative that is uh, has set its goal um, to connect all unconnected schools across the globe to the internet so that the kids in those schools have better access to knowledge. That project actually started as a small garage experiment inside of uh, UNICEF. And seeing the impact, they have then thought through, how do we bring that to scale? And let me talk a little bit about this uh, to help this bring home to our listeners to see the potential and the impact uh, of work working at scale. In a first step, the team mapped all schools across the globe that are not yet connected to the internet, and it's about 2 million schools. But we now know exactly where are they, who are the kids in there, how many teachers are there in there, what is the condition of those schools, and what do you need to connect them to knowledge. And then the team gets to work on two fronts. One is it connects schools with the resources that it has directly, and they've already connected some 5,000 schools uh, to the internet and made an incredible difference for, for those kids. The team is also working, of course, with governments uh, to help governments connect schools on their own. And that's already adding up to some 20,000 schools. Now, in the big scheme of things, there is still a long way to go. But let's remind ourselves, if you think it through, that's over 2 million kids who are now connected to knowledge at scale across this globe who didn't have that access before. And now uh, in its scale-up phase, the team is widening its partnerships, and that's an incredibly important part of innovation, going beyond the traditional UN government relationships and bringing other stakeholders in academia, in the private sector, on the foundation front, and build a larger network so that we accelerate the journey from 25,000 schools up to 2 million. And it's been incredibly rewarding and, and interesting to see how once you have mapped out a larger plan and built larger networks, you can generate impact at scale in the way that Giga does. And I encourage everyone to Google Giga and learn more about their journey. And uh, uh, coming back a little bit on to the strategy part, what we want to do in the office of the UN Secretary General is, is to support other teams and encourage other teams to pursue a similar journey. And so through our innovation lab, through you and Global Pulse, uh, we have worked uh, with you and many other partners to think through how do you replicate and improve that journey to scale to help everyone move forward faster together. That's lovely. And that dig is a wonderful example that brings us to life. Uh, it's a big challenge, but if we're going to have impact, then we're going to need to learn to scale, which is what this podcast is trying to do. Draw together the community of practice to help with that learning process. Kirsten, thank you so much for that. Thank you, John, for having me anytime. It's been a pleasure.